Bungie is nerfing resilience for Lifefall, and we have a second TWAB of the week. This one is dubbed the Mini TWAB from PC Gamer. They have an extensive interview here. We're going to go through all of these bits right here for today's video. We have exclusive Bungie answers our burning questions about build crafting in Destiny 2 Lifefall. Resilience is getting tweaked, how to replicate the font of might buff, and more in our Q&A with the devs. Really exciting stuff. I've already read through it one time, and now let's break down everything. Here we go. There are so many big changes coming to build crafting in Destiny that my head has been spinning. Last week, Bungie began detailing the huge overhaul that's been made to armor, mods, champions, and several other systems when Lightfall arrives on February 28th. Inevitably, I had a bunch of follow-up questions. The kind of nerdy stuff you care about when you're five years and many thousands of hours deep into a live service game, and the studio has been gracious enough to answer most of them. So think of this as a bonus mini TWAB and let's get into it. All right, PC Gamer. It looks like the cost of resilience and intelligence mods have changed. Can you share any other changes? Uh, we have design lead saying there has been a general reduction of average armor mod costs across the board with all non stat modifying mods costing between one and three energy. That sounds like an awesome change that's going to make uh, builds a lot more stronger by reducing that energy cost. Next up, we have will resiliences damage resistance scale work the same way in Lightfall? Uh, we've tuned the curve a bit. At the top end, Tier 10 Resilience will provide 30% damage reduction against combatants, down from 40% in the live game now, so 10% reduction. But we've also made the progression smoother, so at lower tiers you will get more value from Resilience without feeling like you have to max it out at Tier 10 to get a benefit. That's a really nice change there, because right now it feels like you, you have to get 10. Even the difference between 9 and 10 right now I believe is 32 to 40%, so you almost guaranteed have to run 10 right now. It'll be nice to feel like you can run eight or nine and not really lose out on too much if eight or nine is very, very close to the top end right here. For example, if nine resilience is 28, then it's not too big of a deal to go from nine to 10, which I think is an excellent change. Let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comments below. Next up they have, is there an equivalent to the current font of my mod that will trigger a damage buff when you pick up a fire sprite, void breach, iagonic trace, or stasis shard? If you don't know that terminology, that was all referenced in the TWAB. They're basically creating ionic traces, but for every different affinity in the game. So that's what he's talking about. Uh, there are leg armor mods that provide bonus to weapon damage of a specific type while you have any stack of armor charge, which will decay one charge at a time when you have one of these mods equipped. The base damage bonus is the equivalent of higher energy fire 10%, but multiple copies of the mod can be stacked to increase the damage bonus further with three copies of the mod at 22%, getting pretty close to Font of Might's current damage bonus. So there you have it. If you don't know what they're talking about to break it down, it's basically right now you can get elemental wells and it buffs your damage bonus in a variety of different ways. And so now they're doing this uh, with the armor charge and it does have a similar mechanic to that because a lot of people are worried that, you know, they're taking away all that stuff uh, or nerfing the game across the board. And they're kind of just expanding on the current system and making it a little more specific to each class and making it a little more intricate, I think. Seems like a good change though overall. Unlike Font of Might, you can pick up which damage type the bonus applies to and it's not limited to matching your subclass type. That's nice. Uh, you can even mix and match, say, two mods that grant bonus bonuses to your solar weapons and one mod that grants a bonus to your kinetic weapons as it fits your loadout. Nice. Armor charge at its base comes from picking up orbs of power. However, we have some mods that give you other ways of getting armor charge and in Season 20, one of the artifact perks will allow you to gain stacks of armor charge when picking up a fire sprite. Very interesting that they give away one of the uh, artifact mods for Season 20, and if one of them can allows you to get uh, armor charges from picking up Fire Sprite, that would definitely be an advantage to rocking a Solar class, I would imagine, so looks pretty awesome. Uh, next up we got, do armor charge mods that have a passive effect see their charges decay at the same rate, or does it become, or does it vary between mods? Uh, it's all the same rate, and having multiple mods that give passive benefits do not cause charges to fall off faster. So even if you have a different passive benefit armor charge mod in every armor piece, you will still only decay one stack of armor charge every 10 seconds or longer if you equip the time dilation mod, which extends the decay timer. Good to know. Uh, do fire sprite, ionic traces, void breaches, etc. all grant the same amount of ability energy? No, each is tuned for the damage type. Very interesting. We'll have to test out some of that stuff when that goes live and see which one offers the most ability energy. Uh, will weapons that already trigger elemental effects uh, Agar Scepter can slow, shatter, Darcy causes jolt, now be able to stun the corresponding champions when they apply those effects. That's really nice because they mentioned that uh, 
those effects like Jolt will stun respective champions, so will the exotic weapons do that, or is that specific to the subclass? They said yes, anything that creates one of the keyworded effects will work as a counter to the champions to weaken them. Wow, that is really, really cool. Um, that makes all the weapons that do effects like Jolting and etc. that makes them the ability to stun that respective champion, so that will be a really strong and really nice change. Uh, where weapons have different perk options, can the loadout manager save these accordingly? He says, yes, weapon perks are saved via loadouts. That's awesome. Next up, will a loadout be able to include your ship, sparrow, emblem, ghost, finishers, etc.? Not at this time, but loadouts could expand to include some of those in the future. So if you've been using dim loadouts, it does like let you pick like your exact shader and ghost and all that. And it, it, every time you swap the loadout, it'll swap every single one of those things. So I think that the loadouts for this, as they're saying right here, is it's just basically specific more to just your armor and your weapons. So it's a little more of a simplistic system, uh, which might be a good thing overall, but we'll see if they expand on that in the future. Uh, is it 10 loadout slots per guardian per account? Per guardian. There you go. So you get 10 on your warlock, 10 on your hunter, 10 on your titan, 30 total. Do you expect to add more loadout slots over time? Possibly, but we don't have plans to add more loadout slots just yet. I mean, 10 for each character is quite a bit already. I mean, so there are some crazy build crafting people out there that probably want more, but overall, I think the majority of us will do just fine with 30 different builds that we can make. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that down in the comments. How likely is it to take? How likely is it to take to unlock all 10? Uh, loadout slots are unlocked by completing Guardian ranks. Any existing character who has completed the New Light experience will have most slots unlocked immediately, with additional slots unlocked at higher ranks. New Guardians will unlock them as they increase their rank. Good to know. Uh, you announced that match game modifier is being removed from all high on difficulty activities. What kind of activities will the modifier still be used in? Uh, it may show up on special activities in the future where we want to deliberately tweak the gameplay in an unexpected direction, but no specific plans to do so at this time. Good. No one likes match game. Glad that's gone. Lastly, they say thanks to Bungie, uh, all involved at Bungie in turning around those answers so fast with Lightfall just over a month away. Expect the information about these systemic changes to keep ramping up. Let me know what you want to hear most about and I'll endeavor to get another set of questions answered before launch. Really exciting stuff. Let me know which part you are most excited for throughout this article. Make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all the news in Destiny 2. Smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.